Hi, welcome to another tutorial of Learn Loadener series. In this video, we are going to see about pacing in Vuegen. First, we are going to see what is pacing and we are going to see a quick demo about how to configure pacing in Vuegen. Pacing helps you to control the time between the iterations. So if you are load testing your application, you need to simulate the real world situation in your scenario. Not all users are perfect. Suppose I am going to check out two products. So after checking out the first product, definitely I will take some time to check out the second one. Similarly, you need to inject some delay between the iterations in your script. Right now, Vuegen supports three types of options to control the pacing. The first one is as soon as the previous iteration ends. The second option is after the previous iteration ends and at intervals. So the maximum delay you can set in Vuegen for the pacing is 32,000 seconds and the minimum delay is 0 second. If you are getting started with performance testing, definitely you should know about Little's Law. So go to Wikipedia and search for Little's Law for the details but simply put n is equal to z into r plus t where n stands for number of users, z is for number of transactions per seconds, r is for average response time in seconds and t is for think time. So there are a lot of calculators available and definitely it will confuse you but I am going to uh, share you the uh, simple formula which will help you to calculate the pacing for your load test. So go to perftractor.xyz and click on perf calculators. So here I have put some simple calculators which will help you to calculate the uh, number of users, uh, pacing, how many test data you need, how many LGs you need etc. So if we just scroll down so just check out how much pacing do you need. So here you have to enter the uh, transactions per hour. Assume that you are going to achieve 18,000 transactions per hour and simply enter the value and enter the number of users. So in the right side you can see the pacing is 2 seconds. So you can configure this value in your runtime settings. Now we will see a quick demo where you have to configure the pacing. So assume that you have two actions apart from the default init and end, you have search and buy. So when the user logs in using init and he is going to search for a product and he is going to buy and he is going to log off. And if you go to runtime settings and in the run logic, so I'm going to just uh, increase the font here. So in the run logic, and uh, you have to enter a 2. So what will happen is when the user logs in, so he's going to search for a product, he's going to buy the product and then he's going to repeat the action again, search and buy. So totally each user will buy two products. If you go to pacing option, by default, Vuegen selects the first one, start new iteration as soon as the previous iteration ends which means once the the first product purchased by the user immediately he is going to search for the second product and he is going to uh, check out that as well so basically there is no delay once the first product is purchased the user will go to search for the second product and then he will purchase it so basically you are not uh, simulating any delay in your uh, load test. But think from the end user's perspective, think from the crowd perspective. So definitely there will be a delay between the iterations. At least some negligible delay will be there. So to simulate the delay, there are two options available. One is you can simulate the fixed delay or you can simulate the random delay. 
so random delay of between 0 to 32,000 so that is the uh, minimum and maximum uh, number of seconds you can uh, configure in uh, Vuegen so minimum of 0 0.01 and maximum of 32,000 if you are going for the second option start new iteration after the previous iteration ends with fixed delay of say 10 seconds which means once the previous iteration ends only if previous iteration ends then there will be a fixed delay of 10 seconds so I am just underlining the word after the previous iteration ends okay but if you're going for the third option start new iteration at fixed intervals every 60 seconds which means after the previous iteration ends doesn't matter whether it ends or not okay it will wait for the 60 seconds to begin the next iteration the second option there is a condition only if the previous iteration ends but in the third option there is no condition whether it is ending or not it doesn't matter to vision it will just wait for 60 seconds because we are going for the fixed intervals so here you can configure uh, zero seconds also but if you're going for the random with the minimum is 0 0.01 seconds maximum of 32,000 seconds so now you will know the difference between these two the second option there is a condition only after the previous iteration ends but the third option there is no condition doesn't matter whether your previous iteration ends or not it will just wait for the fixed or random interval of whatever the seconds you are configuring it here so for a typical load test uh, what I suggest is always go with the uh, random uh, interval of uh, start new iteration so you can configure the random uh, between say for example uh, 1 seconds to 10 seconds so it will uh, inject the random interval so I suggest this configuration uh, you can uh, of course you can customize the numbers but I always go for start new iteration at random interval so this will simulate the real world situation in your load test and you will get a good results in the uh, results so I hope this video is pretty helpful and if you have a time please go to my next tutorial and please subscribe to QA Insights podcast and QA Insights channel for more such tips and tricks Thanks for listening.